Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspurn and today our YouTube extravaganza is the battle of the dinky iPhones. It's got the iPhone 13 mini which starts from 680 quid, making it one of the more affordable Apple devices if not exactly super cheap. Meanwhile the iPhone SE 2022 is a less stroke inducing 420 quid, so it is better suited to those without super deep pockets. Although unfortunately it's not particularly well suited to anyone who actually wants a good smartphone. Did I, did I kind of spoil the rest of the video now? Yeah, I, I definitely don't like this. Like this, don't like this. But please do watch the rest of the video for context and also my own mental stability. And why not poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell while you're at it. Cheers. So let's start as always with the design and the iPhone 13 mini doesn't actually have the most mini display here to 5.4 inch compared with the 4.7 inch iPhone SE 2022. But as you can see there, it is the more compact handset. And that is of course thanks to the comedically massive bezels here on the iPhone SE 2022. And the Mini is slightly lighter as well at 140 grams versus 144, not exactly much in it there. So as far as one-handed use goes, I found the iPhone 13 Mini is less awkward than its more affordable sibling, there's less fumbling involved. However, it has to be said though that the Mini is a bit of a slab with its thick, chunky, flat edges there as you get a more rounded design which is a bit more palm pleasing here on the SE 2022. Both of these Apple blows do sport an aluminium frame and then you've got glass front and back. It is just your bog standard original glass here on the iPhone SE 2022, whereas you're upgraded to the ceramic shield glass here on the front end of the Mini. Touch wood, a couple of weeks on, still no scratches on the front or back end of that iPhone SE, but I'd definitely see if you're a bit of a butterfingers, I'd probably uh, rather get the Mini just to make sure your screen doesn't get smashed up within minutes. And also while the iPhone mini is available in a wide range of colors, including some quite bright and breezy efforts, here on the iPhone SE 2022, it's a much more basic selection, basically black, silver, or this product red effort. I do really, really like that red, actually. It's rather fetching. I love the way it stretches around the aluminum edges and everything as well. But if red's not for you, then uh, yeah, you're going to have to go with one of the more boring options. You've got full water resistance on both these blowers as well for added peace of mind. In the case of the iPhone SE 2022, so it's IP67, that's boosted to IP68 rating. Oh, I've just turned on the torch, f***ing excellent. That's been upgraded to IP68 water and dust resistance on the iPhone 13 mini. So this thing can go down to a depth of several meters for around half an hour. The iPhone SE, depth of about one meter, so don't take it snorkeling basically. Now when it comes to the software, there's effectively bugger all difference here. They're both running iOS 15. Couple of little differences in the features and the tools. One thing that I actually prefer here on the iPhone SE 2022 is the fact you can see the entire status bar because there's no stupidly ridiculous mustache notch. Slightly different for security as well because the iPhone SE 2022 uses good old Touch ID down below. It's a proper blast from the past. And to be fair, it does work really, really well. It is nice and responsive. The only problem is if your hands are a bit moist or a bit grubby, then it tends to uh, to fall on its arse a bit, which is where Face ID comes in quite handy, which is the security measure here on the iPhone 13 mini. Did prove slightly troublesome during the pandemic when we were all wearing face masks, but Apple has now found a couple of workarounds for that and no one's really bothering with face masks anymore, so it's all good. But security aside, it's basically the same great set of iOS 15 features on both these phones, even though you're paying less for the iPhone SE 2022, you're still getting all the great privacy features, all those same Apple tools and apps. However, on storage, it ain't quite so good news here on the SE 2022. As you can see, there's just 64 gigs of storage on the base model, whereas at least the iPhone 13 mini came with 100 128 gigs minimum. So you may well find that Apple's cheapest handset isn't actually that cheap if you need to upgrade that storage beyond 64 gigs, which I'd highly recommend if you want to shoot any, you know, photos or video or certainly download Genshin friggin' Impact. Especially because as usual, just like with the iPhone 13 mini, there's bugger all micro SD memory card support. If you stuff a bit of extra scratch into Timmy Cook's G-string, you can get the SE model upgraded all the way up to 256 gigs of storage. So that's pretty respectable, at least. In the case of the mini, you can boost that all the way up to 512 gigs. Gigs. Again, depending on how much cash you've actually got spare. And it's also worth pointing out that while the iPhone 13 mini supports those spangly new MagSafe accessories, you get no such support here on the iPhone SE 2022. So just bear that in mind if you want to slap a massive battery pack on the arse end of this thing. Now the display tech on these two handsets is also very different indeed. You've got a proper good OLED screen on the iPhone 13 mini. Unfortunately, that is downgraded to a basic IPS LCD here on the SE 2022. The Mini supports HDR video playback thanks to the eye-pleasing contrast and that natural colour reproduction. 
And the Mini also spaffs out sharper visuals despite the more spacious screen size. We're talking 476 pixels per inch versus 326 pixels per inch on the SE. It is a big difference in quality, all the more noticeable when you stick this pair side by side. The colors, the contrast, everything just looks so much nicer on the Mini. And also the fact that you've got a larger panel on the Mini makes for a more comfortable experience when editing photos, enjoying some Netflix, whatever else. So yeah, the whole movie watching experience not very enjoyable at all on the SE, especially as on the likes of Disney Plus, you can't even crop in in order to you know make it full screen. It just flat out refuses. You've also got a significantly brighter display here on the Mini compared with the SE as well. So much more comfortable viewing experience outdoors when the sun decides to stop being such a lazy twat and actually pop his little head out. However, both phones are stuck with the meager 60 hertz refresh rate. Unfortunately, you don't get any of that lovely super fluid 90 hertz or 120 hertz action that you get from a lot of Androids these days. They do technically have a stereo speaker set up on both the SE and the Mini, though let's face it, that earpiece is pretty tinny and the bulk of the work here is being done by the bottom mounted speaker. And there's no headphone jack on either of these handsets either, which you kind of expect on a phone that's around the same sort of price as the iPhone 13 Mini, but with the iPhone SE 2022 it is a disappointment because most mid-range Androids still come packing a jack. Thankfully, the Bluetooth 5.0 streaming has been absolutely fine on both of these handsets. No issues streaming to speakers, headphones, or whatever else. You do have Dolby Atmos support on the Mini, but not on the SE. Now, when it comes to performance, no real issues, certainly with everyday running. Both the iPhone 13 Mini and the iPhone SE 2022 run off Apple's own A15 chipset. This packs quite a punch, some impressive power for a smartphone in 2022, but Apple hasn't really thought it all through because all of that power in such a small frame with inadequate cooling means that these phones do get toasty as f when you properly put them through their paces. Slap on a bit of Genshin Impact, for instance, bump it up to the maximum detail settings at 60 FPS, and oh boy, yeah, that back end gets pretty warm. So if you are a serious gamer, you want to get your Genshin on for you know an hour, two hours at a time or whatever, then definitely you might want to look at a bigger iPhone which deals with that heat a little more adequately. But every day running on both these hands, there's absolutely no issues whatsoever. I haven't really seen much in the way of apps crashing or stumbling or anything like that, so good stuff. And in terms of connectivity, you've got 5G support. It is just sub six on both these handsets here in the UK, at the very least, no millimeter wave support. And also Wi-Fi 6, not Wi-Fi 6E, but again, that's all good. And literally just as I've recorded that bit about not seeing any issues or stumbling or anything, the iPhone SE 2022 has just completely sh the beds and decided to reset itself, hooray. So now let's talk battery life, another area where there is a gulf of difference between these two blows. It's a pretty dinky 2,400-ish milliamp hour battery here in the iPhone 13 mini. Meanwhile, in the SE 2022, it's an even smaller 2,000-ish milliamp hour. And I found that the battery life here on the iPhone 13 mini perfectly decent, especially considering the size of the thing. You know, most of the time when I stagger to bed, I've still got around, you know, 10 to 15 percent battery life remaining, and even with quite a lot of screen on time. Whereas unfortunately, here on the iPhone SE 2022, ugh. Most days, unfortunately, by about sort of 5, 6 p.m., I'm already on that battery saver mode. And, you know, sometimes that's only with around sort of three and a half to four hours of screen on time. If you actually try and push this thing, God forbid, with a bit of gaming or plenty of camera use, then, yeah, it'll be dead in about three to four hours. And so basically, if you want a phone you can actually use in the evenings, I would go with the Mini. When it comes to the charging tech, subtle difference between them though, you've still got the 20 watt wired charging and you've got that wireless charging support as well, even on the SE 2022, which to be fair is a, a feature that's pretty rare to find at this sort of price point. So let's finish this iPhone comparison with the squint and the camera tech and you can probably tell, even with just a cursory glance, that there is a bit of difference in the hardware here. So what you've got here is a 12 megapixel primary sensor on both of these smartphones, plus you've also got a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter here on the Mini. However, don't be fooled by the fact they've both got 12 meg primary sensors. It is different camera hardware here. So the Mini's got a wider aperture, for instance, where you've also got Apple's improved stabilization tech. So the Mini is more ideal for low light shooting. It also boasts more up-to-date features like a proper night mode. In comparison, the shooting experience on the SE 2022 is decidedly retro. As long as the lighting conditions are ideal, you'll get decent looking pics out of both of these blowers, although the Mini is better when it comes to colour accuracy. You get more natural looking photos compared with the SE. And in more ambient light, the SE 2022 is absolutely sh** on from a great height by the Mini, which is capable of much crisper, cleaner photo reproduction. 
And the 13 mini also comes better in HDR situations as well with strong contrast, whereas you tend to get slightly murkier or oversaturated results with the SE2022. And then of course there's the fact you've got that ultra wide angle shooter here on the mini, which again is something that is culled from the cheaper handsets or you don't have that flexibility. Now when it comes to the video, you can shoot 4K footage at either 30 or 60 frames per second on both the iPhone 13 mini and the SE with respectable enough results even on the more affordable handset. The Mini does offer more advanced options like HDR support, for instance, but if you're just shooting simple home movies, then generally the SE will do the job. You'll just once again have to avoid low light environments, more ambient conditions, because that's when the visual quality really drops. As for the selfie cam, well, this is also pretty bloody basic on the iPhone SE 2022. It's that old 7 meg FaceTime shooter, whereas the iPhone 13 Mini rocks the latest 12 meg True Depth cam, which captures better looking pics. We're talking more natural skin tones, especially indoors, and just stronger detail. So if you are planning on doing a lot of Skyping, Zoom, and FaceTime, and, or whatever, I would say definitely grab that Mini if you can. Uh, certainly if you want the people at the other end of the call to actually see your face. And there you have it, gorgeous peeps. That, in a nutshell, is the iPhone 13 Mini versus the iPhone SE 2022. And definitely, if you've got the extra scratch, I highly recommend picking up this one instead because you've got the improved design, you've got the much stronger media chops, you've got the vastly improved battery life, the better camera tech. I can't remember if I already mentioned that one or not. There are just so many bonuses to get in this one compared with, frankly, this heap of I've done it again. I think that's a sign that I should probably just end it right there, but it'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Have you been using the SE 2022 and you've actually enjoyed it? It'd be great to hear you defending this shower of shit, definitely. And please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you. <laughs>